In this downward shifting market, what about our investor clients? Well, what about them? They're safe. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. So we're excited that we've created for you free access to over 587 Life's Inside Track episodes where we share inside information, making the most of your money, building wealth. And really the great news is you can get access to them from home, from the office, or on the go. So what we're going to do in this episode is discover that real estate leverage can be safe, actually like safe even in a downward real estate market. Mm. And we got proof. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because, you know, a couple of years ago we bought, um, it's a couple of years ago, just over a year or so ago. We bought the height of the market. (laughs) We bought an 18 unit Mm -hmm. apartment building. Now this building, the thing is commercial properties are valued slightly different than, single family residential or right. properties even still what's happened with the market shift and the interest rates going up the cap rate has gone up which means the value of the property goes down because uh-huh. it's it's a percentage now if if we say oh That means we've lost value on the property. But what's interesting is we've been able to increase the rents. So now the income's up on the property, so the value's still similar. Right. It's not higher. Right. So if you're going, that is so confusing to me. That's why I don't do investing in real estate because that just doesn't even come That's why you need a professional on your side when it comes to investing in real estate. So if you're looking for a 15-minute clarity call, let's discover whether you are meant to be an investor, whether you're meant to do even more with the money you have versus letting it basically dwindle because it becomes worth less every day if we don't do something with it. Mm. That's a nasty concept. You know the word that just came to my mind? It's a little harsh, but rot. Your money rots if it sits there doing nothing. Right. And if it doesn't function at a higher rate than the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. It's still decreasing in value and it's dwindling when you think you're doing good with it. If you don't figure out how to get it to work for you, Mm -hmm. it's becoming worthless or worth less at least. Yeah. Yeah. And let's look, because we're pretty recent to a downturn in the market or a correction. Let's uh, let's really call it a correction. I think it is because we were ahead of the curve. Like that wasn't even sustainable. And we did fortunately believe that from the beginning. Now it sustained longer than we thought it would. Mm -hmm. That increase escalated longer than made human sense. Well, three years in a row. Of 20, 25% increases. It's that's, just, that's craziness. That's unheard of, especially in a stable Ottawa-type market. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the U.S. because in the U.S. in 2008, they had a major correction. And, and let's also stipulate this. Our real estate correction is Canada-wide. Pretty much. And as yeah. a matter of fact, I think it's hitting the U.S. as well. This correction is Canadian. It's Canada-wide. It's not just Ottawa. It's not just Toronto. Toronto may be hit a little harder than other areas, but all of Canada is correcting because it over-escalated, probably due to too low interest rates. And COVID, because people were afraid and the people were staying put more and there was still need for housing and it was difficult for people to make a move. There were a couple of factors. And people wanted hard assets. Right. They wanted real assets, which is a real estate. And so mm-hmm. they low interest rates, shortage of it, let's buy some. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. Yeah. Investment properties, all kinds of things. Just let's buy some, let's right. buy some. And there was a shortage available because mm-hmm. people were scared too. Yeah. So in 2008, there was a, what I would call a crash because the bubble was artificially created by false or poor lending practices. Then the market started to crash. How do you think the investors did in the United States? They did really good. They did really, really well because what happens is the the people paying rent continued to pay rent. So they continued to pay their mortgage. didn't matter if the value went down a little bit. The other thing that happened was 
all these people that were losing their homes because they couldn't afford to live in them needed to become tenants, right. which made the tenant market really high. A lot of demand for rentals caused the price of investment properties to go up. So I think we're going to see something similar. There's, we're still growing at a con considerable rate, the population. There's still a shortage of housing, whether it's mm -hmm. rentals or owned occupied properties. There's a shortage. Rental prices will continue to escalate. Well, and rental prices have gone up consistently, really, forever. Well, if you've ever rented, did your landlord <laughs> ever come to you and go, hey, you've been a great tenant, I'm going to reduce the rent? I was never given a reduction in rent. <laughs> no, <there was I. laughs> and, and so the other cool thing with real estate specifically mm -hmm. is something called double leverage. Speak yeah. to that. Yeah, double leverage is not for everybody, but it is very effective, and that is where – you take some of that equity, your house has grown in value significantly, you take some out as a line of credit or another mortgage, and then you apply that as the down payment on a rental property so you can start getting income. And we call it double leverage because now you have two properties in the market growing over time. It's a beautiful thing. And I was always told, and maybe you were told as a kid, pay off your house, don't have a mortgage on it. And I subscribed to that for a long time. I mean, we worked really hard to get our first house paid off. And mm -hmm. it was like a happy day when there was no longer a mortgage on it. Yeah. And then we went, why are we doing this? Because that money is sitting idle doing nothing. So we're yeah. not talking about over leverage. We're talking mm. about wisely leverage. Yeah. So what I discovered as I started studying wealth and, and reading books and studying the wealthy was that most of the people who were affluent had fairly large mortgages on their houses. And I thought, well, that's crazy. Look, they're living in these big houses and they still have big mortgages. Like the, it seemed false to me. It seemed wrong. But then I realized, no, no, no. These people have mortgages on their property because they've borrowed it to open a business. They've borrowed it to buy another piece of property or in a, a commercial piece of real estate or whatever, because they know that with that money, they can make more money with it than what they're paying in interest payments on the mortgage. And it's the mortgage payments are tax deductible. Once you've paid it off and you borrow it to invest it in something, then that interest that you're paying is tax deductible. So that's one of the reasons the affluent use this, this, method. this method. And we're not saying it's wrong to pay off your mortgage. We're just saying there may be a different consideration. There may be a different perspective than the truth that you've always believed. Because I believed it. Mm. So we love this stuff. And... Who wants to discuss it with us? Who wants to pick up the phone and call us at 613-860-4663 and book a clarity call about whether it's the right thing for you to leverage your assets? And like I like to say, wake up your lazy assets. So it's been a privilege of growing with you because we're passionate about us all being positioned for a generational legacy. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward.